Austin, social, uh, social justice demonstrations back in 2020 sparked unprecedented clashes between police and protesters in downtown Austin, leaving dozens injured and resulting in the indictments against 19 APD officers. Tonight, for the first time, we're hearing a story of life-threatening injury and recovery from the worst wounded protester in those clashes. The 22 year old who officials say was shot in the head with a police projectile agreed to speak with senior reporter Tony Pluhetsky in this KVU Defenders exclusive. These images from May 2020 <laughs> shook the nation and stirred demands for police reform across America. I'm not scared of you, bro. From Minneapolis, where George Floyd was murdered, to right here in Austin. There was, there was a part of me that sort of felt almost compelled to go there. Justin Howell, then a 20-year-old student at Texas State University, drove from San Marcos on the second full day of protest. George Floyd's murder was especially just, uh, what's the word, it was just brutal. To add his voice to thousands of others. As a black man whose life has been uh, difficult, in fact, in part because I'm black, um, Obviously, I do feel a certain sense of solidarity with other black people. His participation. Getting shot was honestly like the last thing that I expected to happen. Nearly cost him his life and did leave him with permanent physical and emotional scars. Among the thousands of protesters, Howell only recalls certain aspects of the evening. I remember the environment was pretty electric, which of course contributed to that feeling of, you know, I was out here doing something uh, about this injustice. I felt like I was going there, making my voice heard, and, you know, obviously I figured that that would be it and that I was gonna go home. I do remember that there were people there who were doing things they shouldn't have been doing, like breaking windows and stuff. Protesters say this is among the most disturbing footage from the demonstrations. Cell phone video shows demonstrators carrying Howell from the Interstate 35 frontage road to the plaza in front of the Austin Police Department headquarters, trying to get him help as officers continued firing what they call less lethal rounds. Just moments earlier, an Austin police officer fired what they called a less lethal beanbag round at a man they said threw a water bottle and a backpack at officers. That projectile instead hit Howell in the back of the head. The next day, then police chief Brian Manley, holding back tears, acknowledged Howell was only filming the scene with his phone at the time. We are praying for this young man and, and his family and, um, and, and, and are hoping that uh, his condition improves quickly. Howell was the most seriously injured protester, but others were hurt as well. And over the past two years, the department has remained under scrutiny. Much of the attention focused on the use of what officials call beam backgrounds that officers fired into the crowd. Howell spent eight days in a coma, the next five weeks in the hospital and in rehabilitation. I had to gradually Re regain my ability to walk again. I experienced a lot of head pain, obviously, for a long time after. While he recovered, his brother penned this widely circulated essay for the student newspaper at Texas A&M, where he attends, saying, quote, these less lethal munitions are only less lethal by technicality. My brother's condition shows what can happen when you fire them into a crowd. And in a show of campus support, the president of Texas State wrote on June 8, 2020, that black lives matter. It is not debatable at Texas State. Justin Howell's life matters. Black lives matter in our classroom and on our campuses and in the streets during tumultuous protest. Howell has since returned to college there, starting his coursework all over again. He says he wants to become a social worker and eventually work in the criminal justice system with both defendants and victims. I see myself as uh, doing nothing but good by being one of the few people around in that system whose job is to just try to uh, ensure the best outcome for everybody involved. I almost feel a moral obligation to try to make the world a better place. But the toll of that night remains. He still suffers from chronic neck pain, a loss of energy, and from post-traumatic stress disorder.
only really just recently in the past few months have I gotten to the point where I don't have daily headaches. Physically, I feel like I'm about as good as I'm going to get. Earlier this year, Howell received the largest lawsuit settlement in Austin history when the city council agreed to pay him $8 million. His attorney says he plans to donate $25,000 to help Texas State students get PTSD treatment. Now, more than two years later, Howell says he is still focused on what first drew him to the Austin protest, efforts to make policing more equitable for everyone. They need to start taking on the role of public servant as opposed to enemy defeater. And because of what he went through, he says that call is now more focused than ever before. The police culture needs to improve to a point where even when everything isn't all sunshine and rainbows as far as their relationship with the people that they have power over, they still, their first priority is still ensuring the best outcome for everybody. The officer who prosecutors say fired upon Justin Howell is among 19 indicted by a grand jury in February on a charge of aggravated assault by a public servant. And in September, the Austin Police Department said in a report that it has changed training, equipment, and policies about how to respond to protest. APD says it will no longer fire projectiles into crowds and promise that the injuries of May 2020 will never happen again. For the KVU Defenders, I'm Tony Plahetsky, KVU News.